Coming up on today's episode of Airborne Unlimited, grandson of Anola Gay pilot flies refurbished B-29. Worldview announces first ever multi-day straddle-like mission. And Elon Musk tweets, Falcon Heavy could fly in three months. Hello, I'm Christopher C. Odom. It's June 15th, 2017, and this is Airborne Unlimited. Wichita's beloved B-29 Superfortress, Doc, took to the skies yet again June 9th, 2017, from McConnell Air Force Base, this time with an added aspect of historical significance and Air Force heritage. Sitting in the co-pilot seat was Brigadier General Paul Tibbetts IV, the 509th Bomb Wing Commander. Taking control of the aircraft means he has now flown the only two currently operational B-29s, Doc and Fifi. In 1998, Tibbetts IV flew Fifi with his grandfather, retired Brigadier General Paul Tibbetts Jr., who piloted the B-29 Anola Gay when the aircraft and its crew dropped an atomic bomb on Japan, helping end the World War II. Tibbetts IV said, the only time I ever flew with my grandfather was with Fifi. He had given up on aviation, had not flown in any aircraft in a very long time. He and I got to fly Fifi together, which was awesome. It was a great opportunity for me to be with him. Now, 70 years after historic World War II mission and nearly 10 years after the passing of his grandfather, Tibbetts IV, who is traditionally a B-1 Lancer pilot and currently a B-2 Spirit pilot, once again boarded a B-29 to honor his grandfather. Worldview has announced it will launch the first extended duration development flight of its high-altitude straddle-like vehicle later this month, carrying a commercial payload. With the launch window opening on June 21st, this will be the Worldview's first ever live broadcast launch and its most important to date for the straddle-like vehicle. Jane Pointer, founder and CEO of Worldview, said, the straddle light is spearheading a new market for data collection of our planet, the environment, and human activity from a perch at the very edge of space. This next mission will be our first attempt to really push the envelope with a flight designed to test. For the very first time, all the integrated critical systems needed to bring this straddle light online for commercial markets. The remotely controlled, uncrewed Stratolite vehicle features a Stratocraft payload module carried by a system of high-altitude balloons that ascends to and operates along the edge of space, offering low-cost, long-duration persistence over customer-specified areas of interest. Worldview's proprietary altitude control technology allows it to harness stratospheric winds to steer the Stratolite to and from desired locations and loiter above them for weeks and months at a time. After the break, Falcon Heavy readies for flight. Progressive Aerodyne Sea Ray Adventure offers Rotax 912 power, a basic instrument panel, and radios. Fly it away for under $120,000. Visit SeaRay.com for more details. The dream is real, a truly affordable personal jet aircraft. The Subsonics personal jet kit is priced at only $42,000. Kit plus engine is still under $100K. Add instruments, upholstery, and paint, and you're flying. It's time to put your money where your bucket list is. Learn more at sonicsaircraft.com. Welcome back. If you have a story suggestion for Airport Unlimited, Aero TV, the new AMA Drone Report, our website or podcast, just email to news-spy at aero-news.net. The Falcon Heavy could have its first flight in as little as three months, according to a tweet from SpaceX founder Elon Musk. In a tweet posted June 8th, Musk said, all Falcon Heavy cores should be at the Cape in two to three months, so launch should happen a month after that. 
Falcon Heavy combines three Falcon 9 boosters into one that is expected to be capable of lofting 119,000 pounds into orbit. All three segments of the Falcon Heavy booster are intended to be recoverable. While that's impressive, it's only about a third of what NASA's Saturn V booster carried when it sent men on their way to the moon. Musk hopes to mount a privately funded trip to orbit the moon in 2018. The Falcon Heavy was supposed to have flown in March, but that timeline was pushed back after the launch pad accident in September that destroyed a communications satellite. Musk openly admits his plans are ambitious. It's Thursday, which means that it's time for an Aero Community Update highlighting news and information about the incredible people and organizations that populate the Airborne Partnership Initiative behind Airborne Unlimited. In previous editions of our Aero Community Update, we've introduced you to our Airborne Partnership Initiative. Now, we can report that our partnership has come together quite well and includes some incredible representatives from every aspect of aviation and aerospace. Our first opportunity to put it to a test was at EAA AirVenture a couple of years ago. We joined with one of our partners, the EAA, to add a new feature to AirVenture. We called it the AirVenture Innovation Preview, or simply the AIP. The intent was to provide aviation industries represented at AirVenture a broad international forum to present their innovations. Working closely with EAA, we arrived early at AirVenture to prepare our prototype AIP for its, metaphorically speaking, test flight. To say it flew well would be an understatement. About 100 aviation-related businesses contacted us to participate in the program. Out of these initial contacts, 31 made the grade to be part of the AIP first flight. The result was several hours of professionally produced high definition video divided into multiple segments. Various AIP program segments have now been viewed more than a million times and at a number of events and to say it was a resounding success is an understatement. There is a 2017 AirVenture Innovation Preview in the works and mailings to potential partners is underway. But contact Jim at earl-news.net if you need advance information. After these messages, mayors oppose ATC privatization. There's a difference between charting a steady course and pushing for the ceiling. And for nearly a century, Hartzell Propeller has been defining that difference. It's in our passion for engineering and research and our dedication to testing the limits of performance. We are built on honor. We are Hartzell Propeller. The Bristol Light Sport Aircraft is what you are looking for. The Bristol is wider than a Cirrus, faster than a Skyhawk, offers more storage than a Husky, and comes standard with Garmin Avionics. So what are you waiting for? Visit Bristel.com to find out how you can get into a Bristel today. With so much news coming out of the aviation industry, we're summarizing a few of those other great stories in a brief segment we call Around the Patch. Following the announcement by the White House in support of privatization of the nation's air traffic control system, a bipartisan group of over 35 mayors from 28 states across the country released a statement critical of the plan in coordination with the Alliance for Aviation Across America. After a number of reports regarding previous spotty attendance and participation, the Flying Aviation Expo in Palm Beach, California, planned for later this year, has been put on hold by its organizer and principal sponsor, Shiden Precision Eyewear. The crew of a Southwest Airlines jet that had just departed from Midway Airport in Chicago en route to Windsor Locks, Connecticut, made an emergency landing at O'Hare International Airport Monday after experiencing an engine problem. According to an ATC recording, the crew reported that the plane lost an engine shortly after departure from Midway. 
the LM100J Lockheed Martin's new commercial freighter aircraft will make its international debut at the 2017 International Paris Air Show. The aircraft will be on static display June 19th through 20th, first at Paris Le Bourget Airport. The Prince George's County, Maryland Police Department Aviation Section is expanding to include a third MD-520N helicopter with delivery expected in the spring of 2018. Headquartered in College Park, Maryland, the Prince George's County Police Department currently operates two MD-520N helicopters in service with PGPD since 2000. Well, that's it for today's trip around the patch. Now let's get back to the rest of the news. Starting this year at Air Venture, the Twilight Flight Fest at the Fun Fly Zone will consist of a series of flying events on Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday evening during Air Venture. EAA, STOL, Invitational Flying, will begin the event. STOL Flying used to be a part of the main air show scheduled at Oshkosh, but moving it to the Fun Fly Zone for two nights last year worked well because the aircraft were able to take off from their preferred surface of grass and fly when winds were more favorable. Now, the STOL Invitational will take place during all four nights of the Twilight Flight Fest, but that's not all that will be going on at that time. The Paradigm Aerobatic Team will be performing as well, expanding on their successful appearance at Oshkosh last year. After that, Twilight Flight Fest still has more left to offer. Guests can expect to see skydiving and other events well suited for the dimming light, demos by fixed wing ultralights and light sport aircraft, gyroplanes, powered parachutes, and 3D RC flying. The Twilight Flight Fest will provide attendees with an up close look at other forms of aviation and should offer a fun and fresh perspective to any and all crowd members. Well, that's our program for today. Remember that Airborne Unlimited stream daily, Monday through Friday, with additional breaking news bulletins for important stories that fall outside of our normal deadlines. If you're watching us on YouTube, please subscribe and do check us out on Facebook and Twitter. Get comprehensive, real-time, 24-7 coverage of the latest in aviation and aerospace stories anytime at aero-news.net. Keep flying. We'll see you tomorrow.